you know when you have one of those feelings that you shouldn't really have gone on the trip. I've taken like half an hour driving around all the streets trying to find this fishery and I've been here before, that's a sad thing, many years ago. Couldn't recognise it. Arguing with the sat nav. And they said, it's got a bit of weed on it. <laughs> it's good for frog weedless lures. Might be a chance of some jack pike. It's got a bit of weed on it. It looks pretty much choked with algae. Gin clear. Maybe you guys can even see down through there. Beautiful clear water. But by golly, it's going to be a tough one. I've got two hours. It's taken me an hour and a bit to find this place. I've no idea, there's a few swims around there. They're going to be all choked with weed pretty much. I'm just going to throw out there, see what I can get. I've got no weedless lures as usual. I'm going to be using a sidewind and wind it across the surface. And when I get weed, I get weed. We'll just see if we can get a few hits. It's just one of those pending disaster type of trips. I feel doomed to failure. I may be pleasantly surprised to be wrong. But I can't twitch any um, weedless lures through here because I don't have any weedless lures. But if there's any gaps, I'm going to have a quick throw around. That's what I'm using at the moment. Wire trace. Put it down there. You can see it. Regular old sidewinder that goes down like a missile, which is not very good. But we'll have a throw and see if I can get something. Just I can only speed wind, I've got no choice. I've got to get weed otherwise. Just looking for one slamming take. There's the weed, that means no fish. Get to the edge of the weed, and I've got to come over the top, it's going to be choked. So I'm going to get really basically all I'm doing. Look there, all over by the shouting. What I'm going to be doing is pocket fishing. It's going to be cleaning off every single cast and a bit more perhaps accurate throwing. No weed. I'm going to jack that drag up because that's no good. What I don't like doing is cranking this across a surface like this with a with the weed on it. I always think that disturbs any potential predators below. So it obviously looks like it's pretty shallow. Got my rod held really high. I normally like to twitch these a bit. Go straight in a wee bed there, straight in. Three, two, one. Okay. Today's not going to work for me, people. It's blanket weed. I thought it was bad when I get it in my uh, in my fish ponds, but when it it dries on the surface like that, it's because it's been there so long. Nothing's going to knock it down till its uh, temperature drops. Oh, a free cast. I'm just going to have a drop in these little holes here. I might get a couple of casts across there. Fairly laborious fishing, having bought a day ticket and you've got on two hours of what I fear might be fruitless fishing. I think this might be the shallow end of the lake, I'm not sure, to be honest, I really am not sure. The gentleman in the tackle shop did say there was a lot of weed here. He's not incorrect, is he? I could try a surface plug. I'm going to see if I get any reactions at all on this first. Of course, this time of the afternoon, people could have been through here and already hammered it, the weedless fishermen. Oh, I'm doing weed clearing now, people. <laughs> Look at this lot. That's, that's why you need a weedless lure, which I haven't got. Got to laugh. Talk about wasting my time. can also see, using polarising glasses, the water's so clear. I can see the lure 
So if, if, if there was a fish flashed up behind it, I think I would see it. All right, let's uh, move swims. Yeah, it is. Definitely weedless lure territory. But you can but try. Get yeah, like seconds in the water before I've got to bring it out. It's about 10 seconds and up it comes. Very, very painfully clear water and absolutely no real channels to uh, work the lure through straight in the weed you know i've actually hooked a chunk of weed and i'm moving that whole weed bed now shouldn't we snag this weed up and actually draw it in slowly like this thereby giving myself a clear area i might be doing myself a favor here because i could always come back look it's all moving yeah very interesting We clearing and fishing at the same time. All well, seems good to me. I'll get that other piece over there and tow that in. Let's just try this. Give me a as stupid as it sounds. It might not actually be quite as stupid as you think. Why did not I just draw it in slowly? It's exactly the same blanket we'd get on my pond. It is actually moving. It is actually moving out there, look. If I could get that other piece to move as well, just drift in here. It opens up a whole new uh, area that I could throw something. Boys, I've, I just had a blast of a hook up here. He's under the weed. Hopefully that'll keep him quiet. Oh my God. He's in that lot. He is right in this lot here. I should think we're gonna lose him. You never know. I don't even know the fish is. Do I net the weed? Has he gone? I'm just gonna take a gamble. Oh, look at the size of this pike. I've got a net full of weed. Oh, what a mess. Got to keep him, got to keep him tight, got to keep him tight, got to keep him tight. He's in. Oh, <laughs> what is this going on here? What is going on? How did that turn around? Let's check it out. Got the mat. That is almost at my feet, people. Even for me. That shocked me, I've got, to, I've got to tell you, beautiful markings on this, look. Now I've got to watch this treble, let's get the forceps. Just when I thought it was all over. Folks, look at that. He's gonna go. That is why I go fishy. Why I could do, big ass plug, that was on the old Big S plug that must be 30 to 40 years old. It's an original one. I don't know, a Shakespeare Big S, not selling them, just telling you what it was. And that is a cracker. I don't even know what happened. It was just an explosion in the, in the weeds and that was it. Job done. Fantastic. Let's get him back. Just gonna hold him there. Such superb camouflage on these. Look at that. Just let them recover because in the warmer weather they take a bit longer to get their breath back. Oh, or perhaps not. Oh. That was good, wasn't it, people? Very, very lucky. Well, the wind's picking up because we've got a big storm coming tomorrow or tonight with rain and it's drifting the weed this way. So I've done a bit of pulling with the weed there. It leaves me a little bay here. So I can make a longer cast out there. I've lost two lures, one in the tree down the side, which is a sidewinder gone, another was a sort of spinner that went on one of these island things for casting too close. 
and now I'm just going to work this in close just running it below the skin of the lake I cannot go down very far because I'm going to pick the weed up that's about in there so that's the lure I'm using this one's called a big S listen you might be able to hear it if I very very old one let's put it there that's the rattle it makes okay guys it makes a rattle as well but it floats so it's the nearest I got to a surface one and I'm just going to pop it if I pull it fast that's how it would normally work I'll put it here you can see it better hopefully I've got the right camera for this really but that's how I would normally fish it like this I would normally have it swimming under the surface going through the water like that there but what I'm going to do is just let it rest on the surface and just I just pop it every now and then if I retrieve it it's going to go deep if I leave it like that it floats on the surface I'm going to try this bay here quite fancy fishing a bit short around the bay and the wind's come right up now which I think might actually now listen it could there's only about six swims on there it could work for me or against me it could push all the weed into one of the swims or it could blow it away from it I can only have a few casts that something bizarre needs to happen well I'm walking up to this one cautiously after getting that pike because there's two tiny little gaps here 12 feet could even be one laying down there and a cast under that tree and if I was dead bait fishing I really fancy twitching the bait through that tree but I'm not I've got nothing I've got nothing to play with here look there's the lure nothing it won't even I haven't got enough to make it bite through the surface I think I'll try out there first I don't want to go too far so if I cast too far going to the weed that's going to put any fish on the alert All right, well, I'm going to have to cast oh see that's what I didn't want to do too late I've got that whole weed bed at least I can move it as you see I could drag it make the hole bigger maybe if I come back be a bit more space to work with I see nothing mind you I saw nothing out of that last one it just must have exploded from under the weed let me just get a couple more in there I generally think with a lure you're going to get them first time or not at all I think after now I've got the weed again now so now I'm going to rest that swim cast over there under that tree and see if I can at least get about 10 or 12 foot cast without getting the plug up the tree oh that's a nice cast Graham that almost deserves a fish Suppose I'll get two of those again. No. Edge of the weed. Bugger. Okay, so there's like one swim that's uh, open here. We can see the weed for some reason is clear. I can see other stagings way over the back there. Two. That one might be doable. That one's choked with weed with a small pocket, but the other two are in fact choked up with weed. So this one looks like it might be the only one to little fry move in there to to give me a shot I've got uh, before the rain starting, which is now I've got barely an hour. So better crack on and see what we can put a lure through here. I think I'll stick with the same lure. I've always liked that sort of rusty brown colour. I wouldn't surprise you if there's a pike here because with those fish moving, look. That's a central bait fish area, you think. Could give it a good old whack here too. I'm gonna to cover a bit of ground. You'd think there would be predators around in fairness, but I don't know how far the weed is growing up out there. So we just have to sort of suck it and see. I'm still oh right behind it. Big boil out there, right behind it. Small fish. That was a small one. I just literally the words are out of my mouth about those bait fish dimpling on the surface there. 
obviously the chances go up the more area of water I can pull this through and it might be a tad deeper there. What I'm doing is I drop the rod top and just tweak a little bit lower and that will sink it about an inch below the surface but when it on the surface I bring it out and I can get it popping along the surface let that front front vein actually dig water now I get close I can sink it a bit and I'm fishing it quite slow that was definitely definitely a fish that boiled up on my lure there what a pleasure to have a nice piece of water to cast through see if he'll take again even a couple of pounder would be nice keeping it pretty well on the surface because I don't know the depth of the weed out there. And I don't want to drag weed through because it'll look unnatural on the lure. Come on fish, something. Make a lunge, make a hit. Guys are loaded up again. I've got to get it through the weed. He took me on the surface once. Might come off not such a big fisher, I think. Let's see if we can get him in. See if we can get him in for you anyway. Probably going to dump the plug. No, he's still there. Oh wow, he's not that small. He had one go at it, and he had another. I had a second cast. I thought I went back to the original plug. I've got a lot of weed on the line. A lot of weed on the line. Oh wow. Am I going to get lucky? Or is he going to roll over? He's kicked his way out. He's kicking his way. Oh, yeah, yeah. woken up. Sometimes the weed goes over your eyes and it keeps them calm but this guy as you can see is having none of it. I don't want to scoop nothing because you might also get the trebles. Just want to... I think... Oh no he's in a trouble. I got him. I got him. I got him. Got him people. There you go. There's the lure. There's the pike. And there is a ton of weed. Well, wow, what a result from a day when I thought I'd catch absolutely nothing. Get my hooks off. Give him a quick hold for you. There is one frisky looking pike. I got my head on there. He came on so I'd get close. If I get too close because he could whip around and spike me. A long fish, probably three and a half feet long. Beautiful markings on it. Get hold of him properly. There you can see. He doesn't, there's the big teeth guys. Check those out, just under that fold of skin. And I'm holding on the percolar cover just there and the rib not in the gills. So amateurs out there, that is not the gills, that is a proper way to get hold of a pike in that membrane. What a beauty. Well pleased with that one guys. I mean, I consider myself to be lucky. You might think, oh yeah, it's easy catching, but no, it's not always easy. I came out with the wrong attitude big time but it got turned around by that big S plug. Fantastic. Let's get this one back for you. Yeah, just gonna lay him down there. Let him recover. So camouflaged, unbelievable. Now look, you can see him there. See the beautiful green colors. I'm just holding his tail, let him recover properly. And he wants to go, look at that. Beautiful. What a result. That's a little, totally awesome, lucky old fishing session, I know. Off you go, pal. Straight back under the weed there. Get in. 25 minutes to zero hour. A few more casts. There's a pocket that's clear of weed over there. I'm going to fish that one, this one, and that one. About five minutes each before I go home. This is very interesting, people. They use straw bells or barley, I think it is. Trying to keep weed down and keep the waters clear. And they've got actually tubes. Which look like tubes of barley all the way around there. So I, I wasn't sure what they were. So obviously it does suffer hugely from the algae. <laughs> and it looks like, obviously, the barley straw doesn't work. It does keep the water clear, but it doesn't stop the algae growing. There is a ton of it. Now I've got one little pool, a last cast pool. And I just had something follow me in. I could just see a ridge of water. I don't know whether it would take again. Probably not. Just going to try it. 
is he, he gave me his chance and I missed it. Got to have another go, got to have another go. Well, I'll tell you what, I thought that was going to be a blank on that trip. As luck would have it, I've got two nice pike out of it. Beautifully marked, beautifully marked, I did like that. Now, there's a big storm coming in and there's going to be two, three days before I can get there again. I'm wondering, just wondering on a hunch, if I can get down there and catch another one or two pike on frogs that might skip me and or my own lures. I'm going to need to make some traces up, I'll show you guys in a minute. But the wind might move that weed, that blanket weed, all down one end of the lake. It's a bit of a gamble because, now in my luck, it has moved it all down the lake into the swims. There's only about six swims ahead of fish. So it's a gamble, but first I'm going to see the lake and go and see if the weed is moved and where it's gone to before I rush in the tackle shop and buy a day ticket. I often do it and go and look at the water first and then check out whether I want to buy a day ticket. It saves you wasting money. Not only that, time as well. Anyway, I've got to knock up some pike traces. I'm going to show you how I make those now. I'll give you a little tip on swivels and then hopefully... I think tomorrow afternoon I'm going to have another go at it if this weather, the wind goes down. Now, this is what I do. So you've got your favourite lure there, but you have to ask yourself, even though you've got a wire trace, what sort of attachment can you use at the front end to make sure that you're well attached to it? You're going to be using a few of these. That's barrel swivels. You attach one end to your fishing line, the other end to the wire. And of course, you're going to attach another one, don't lose them, a different amount of link swivels which attach the lure to the end of the trace. But listen, some of these are good, some of these are average, and there are some out there that I just don't like at all. Let's run through them. Right, let's look at this one. This one, I have no idea, we just call them the link swivels, but you can see, hopefully, the shaft of the wire comes up, goes around and back on itself there. Let me just turn this around and pop it free for you. Now this particular one, as you can see, the wire would come off of here and you'd put your lure on via this spring there, which goes up and over in that slot there. Can you see that? Just there, hopefully you can see it. I don't particularly like this method, although it takes a huge amount of pressure to actually pop this open and then you could probably as you can see it's only wire it's only a piece of wire you could probably lose your expensive lure and not only that lose a fish so I'm not wild about those I'll show you another one this one here a little bit better and the reason for that I say is if you turn it over you can see let me point there you can see there's a tag end just there See that tag in just sticking through? So the principle is the same in as much as you can just push it open like this. You can slide your lure on there. You can close it over. But the fact that this tag end just kicks off a little bit, I feel, makes that one stronger. But there's a better one. This one, way, way better. I feel, this is my experience. Decent swivel stronger wire definitely stronger wire a stronger sort of spring effect on it there you have to push that ring up and over there slide your lure on and then look it goes over it's locked it cannot come off because i have had link swivels that do come off and there's nothing worse than losing expensive lure i won't because i don't use expensive lures finally this one which is what we use big game fishing I call that a cross lock. It's an old school type of cross lock lure. And the reason being, it's very, I can barely do it with my fingers. Oh, now this one will be used more sea fishing. I'll open it up so you can see the spring. Your lure will go on the end of there. And it doesn't actually go over, as some people think, over this first shaft of wire there. You have to get it oh, like that over both, over both. So it's doubly strong. So that one is one of the stronger ones. And that one would be my other favourite that I use for lures. Now I'm just going to knock some lures up. I'm going to be using 
We're going to be using these small barrel swivels. I think they used to be called, I think they're about a number 10 size, but they might change size numbers now. But these, believe it or not, as small as they are, do revolve and they have a braking strain of about 50 pounds, which is no way you're pulling with a fishing rod, is there? I'm making up the trace with the wire here. Just an old one called, whatever it's called, tie cheater. And wait for this, 40 pound braking strain. That's what we're going to make up, and this is how we're going to knock them up. You've probably seen it on our film before, but I'll show you anyway. Okay, change of spectacles required. I'll go to binoculars. You don't need a really long trace, because listen, when a pike hits a lure, or indeed any predator, he's got the lure, he knows it's not bait, he's spitting it out within a millisecond if you don't set the hook on him. So, really, they don't really swallow the bait or anything like that, because it's an artificial lure. So... I would make my traces a little bit shorter. I'm going to say 15 inches. So I'm going to cut off a piece of 15 inch, 40 pound wire. This is cable wire, not single strand. And all I do, you've seen these before, I take one of my barrel swivels. Everybody has a different way of doing them. I'm just telling you, this is where I've done it for 40, 50 years. No problems. And listen, I don't, I don't do it to catch a fish. I do it because I don't want to lose the lures, do I? Some of my lures are really, really old. I lock a pair of forceps on the end and then it gives me something just to pull that knot down. Once, release them. Second knot. It's the same way I make my uh, bait fishing rigs. Exactly the same way when you're using a hook at one end or a swivel at the other. Tie it like that. There you are. Now you've still got that tag end. I pull a little bit of tension to fold. The swivel is there. My line is here. I'm not going to swing it this way because I've done this before, haven't I? And it's flown off and it could hit the lens or other things. One, two, three, four, however many times you want. Unlock it. You're left with, well, you want to leave yourself with a little tag end. Can you see that there? Get your scissors as tight to the tag end as you can and keep hold of the tag end. Pop. And I put them either in a saucer or somewhere where you're going to pick them up, those little fibres. That's one end there. Simple on the other end. You do these in the evenings before you go fishing. Don't leave them until the day. Same with the swivel, whichever brand you want to use. I've just shown you four different types. I'm going to call them all link swivels. They're linking your lure to you effectively let's pull that one tight in fact i do that myself anyway it's easy with the cable wire because cable wire is very very supple single wire they use it a lot in the states I tend to find it it can kink you know you can actually well you can break it you can fatigue it so i tend to use cable some people use 20 25 pound wire I've got a spool of 40, I've had it years, I'm using 40. I have no trouble with it, the fish don't even see it because they're coming behind the lure, aren't they? Now, some people with lure fishing like to fish braid. Sometimes I fish braid, sometimes I don't. And the reason for that really is nothing to do with setting the hook really in the UK because we tend to use slightly smaller lures. It's basically, if you use 80 pound braid, it's so you can pull a lure out of a snag or drag a snag up and get your lure back. So don't lure fish with light tackle. So there we are, there's my link swivel, there's my wire trace, 15 inches at least, perhaps a tad more. Barrel swivel, I just unlock it, put on my desired lure of the day, which in this case is a highly, highly collectible wooden made Australian from Cairns, Australia, Barramundi lure. Deep diver, really good. And there you go. Next thing is, add water. Now. I'm going to be using some of Mike's frogs and he's given me some artificial sprats to try. So I'm going to go back to that lake and see if I can't catch another pike. But if you're going lure fishing, that's my setup. And here we are first back at the lake and after all that storm, 70 mile an hour winds, the weed is, the weed is, the weed is still exactly where it was before. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. The water's still very clear down there. It's exactly the same. I don't believe, maybe there's a tiny gap there, but look, I can actually sort of physically see it drifting around. Maybe, it, I thought it would all be sunk, I've got to be honest. I thought a lot of that would be sunk. What a nightmare. It was too late now. 
I was going to have two sessions here, I think I'll just have the one. Just got a couple of hours, let's see if we can pick one pike off to go with the other two I've got. I'm going to try first with the plug I had that fish on, the first one, which was the big S, and then I might maybe, maybe try Mike's frogs. But like all lures, you've got to go with, you know, the last one you caught a fish on, I feel. Everybody has their favourite lures. And you say, why do you have a favourite lure? Uh, why is that your favourite? And the general reason is, it's the one you caught your last fish on. So, let's get one of those biggest lures out. I'm afraid to say, my box here, my lure box, is an absolute mess. But the lure in question is right there on the top. I will give Mike's two a go. I've already got a trace rigged up on the rod. One of those I made. And I've got the, I'm going to call it the cross lock. Because that's what we used to call these big game fishing, was called a cross lock swivel. Normally a little ring as well on some of the lures, there's not on these, so a little bit of a fiddle getting it on there. It's on, locked. Got everything else. And you can see it, that sort of rusty brown colour, but the benefit being, as I showed you before, very, very buoyant. I just tweak it and it bobbles across the top. Right, let's get to work. Check drag. Don't like this wind in this direction. Oh dear. It's tipped down with rain recently. And this does cast well, this one, I have to say. Ooh, mama, that is windy. Well, boys, I switched the camera. I've got a nice clear patch here. I threw it. Oh, somebody else's trace caught my plug there. That's weird. Look at that. That is a short one. Now there, ironically, is one of those funny little clips I was talking about early on that I don't like. So somebody's lost that, and they were on. I don't know what line, but quite a small wire, so that can go back in the in there. Get rid of the litter. And gain a couple of swivels. Yeah, there's one right right by this patch of weed there under the trees. Caught me by surprise, took it, spat it out. I don't expect he'll take it again, but you never know. I'm gonna try him. Oh, it's right where he is there, right there. And I've missed my chance. What a shame that was. That was a nice fish too. That was a nice fish. Generally fine with lure fishing guys, it's generally a first cast, they know what a lure is the second time around. And that was a decent sized fish. I cannot get, I don't think, in there. Nah, that's a shame, chance gone. Weed, weed, weed. So this one's got a rattle to it. You know, I'll see if I can get either mic on this one. Good rattle to it. All these are pretty well, it's the same shape as that big S, but it's called basically an alphabet plug. And that one has got a little split ring in front of the towing point there. And that gives it a little bit more action, I feel. Let's give them a little run out, a bit of exercise and see if that pike will come back up. Try one long one out on the edge of that weed there. That's quite close to the edge of that weed bed. Sometimes people just say, let that sit there for a second or two. So you go slap on the surface and it gives the pike time to come and look at it first and then start it back. And this one I'm going to have to bring back a lot slower because it does dive a lot deeper. I'm not sure about that bright orange colour. So I generally want to use in coloured water. It might be a bit garish in this uh, sort of chalk, chalk based water here. Might be, uh, they need a pair of sunglasses to hit this one. And I'm keeping the rod higher. And then I drop it down lower when I get closer in. Still getting bits of weed on, that is just enough weed there put a fish off.
Well, I've just seen that pipe, as you know that, so I go right under the stagey, which is here. So I've just crept off it. I've only got the frog, which is sort of surface. I don't know if he's going to take it or not. Probably lose it. I've actually lost two on the frog. I don't like those weedless lures. I really don't like them. I've seen so many strikes on them and no conversions. But I've got no room here to, to use my um, hard lure. I think I'll just drop the frog over and see what happens. Just see if he will come out. Which way he's facing, if he's even going to see it. There's the frog, just there. Hmm. Can't really put my head over this eye, can I? Oh, it's sinking now, that's better. Now you might see that. Of course he needs to be He needs to be facing that way to see me come past with the frog. Here we go. I don't even know if he's under there. He went under there, but he could have gone under that weed bed there. Move down where the weed's blowing, all the wind is going down this narrow end of the lake, and on that frog, just got one very small pike covered in weed. You can still see there's plenty of weed there, so it's kind of uh, kind of strange how you actually miss the bigger fish, but you only get a small one like this. So get him unhooked, get him straight back. He's on one hook there. Basically, he's almost, if you look at that, just hanging onto the rubber. In fact, I think he is. I think his teeth are mostly on the rubber of the frog. Neat little guy, save the blank. Well, people, just get my lead sorted out after that. Could be a fish, and I mean, I really enjoyed that fish. It uh, doesn't always have to be about the biggest fish, the huge fish, does it? It can be just a nice, enjoyable day when it all goes together. Now, I'm back in the tackle shack. I've got to get the fire started in here because I have a couple of guests coming. That's right. Let's get the fire going. Now the first guest is just here to my right who's not sure about the fire. He's not sure here, but he's not sure about the fire. He likes a fire when it's going. Good boy. Good boy. This is Mike's dog, Jax. So if you've seen Jax here, you've guessed. That's right. Mike's going to be popping in. Let's get this door shut and get this boy. Get this bad boy going. That's incredible, this thing. What do you think of it, doggy? No, he wants out. You know, he's like Jack Russell's. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Look at these teeth. Look at that. Show him those. Oh, my God. Big teeth for a little dog. Big teeth for a little dog. Yeah, you're a babe. You're a babe, you're a babe, aren't you? Right, fire's on the go, I think. There's a man with a camera in there. How the hell did he do that? That'll get going, and uh, Mike's gonna pop in in a minute. He's just actually loading a film for TA Outdoors. He's in the house, gotta go in there. Got no Wi-Fi in the tackle shed, dream on. We don't want mobiles and all that stuff in here, do we? I suppose if I locked myself in, it would be handy having a mobile phone. It's a long shout. Okay, let's get organised. Now remember, a few fields back I was talking to you about my neck curtain, trying to kill that bright light coming through, but the sun is actually going through a little bit higher now. And I'm just going to put this across here, just to try and kill that light off. And then you can see over here, I'll move this chair in so Mike can uh, sit in there as well. Uh, move the table forward. And as you see, no new additions to the tackle shack at the moment. There are plans afoot to find some more. Even a donation would be nice. Somebody was gonna send us an old wooden fishing reel as well. Ah, oh, that sounds like that's going now. Obviously the old mouse comes in here 
because Mr. Jack the Jack Russell is sniffing around like there's a mouse. Fetch him out of there. Fetch him out. Go on, fetch him out. Under there, under there. Dig him, dig him out. Who's under there? Who's under there? Who's under there? Fetch him, fetch him out. Fetch him out. Fetch him out of there. They can't help it. They've got to get their nose into something. Actually, sounds a bit like my wife. Well, here we are guys, you've seen guest number one. He's actually been out digging half my garden up. And here's guest number two. Hopefully he won't be digging the garden up. So it's Mike, as you know, <laughs> Bones, TA Outdoors, what have you been up to? What sort of stuff have um, you been up to? I've actually done a bit more work at the house, to be honest. We've been doing that bunker. Yes, yeah. The old yeah. bunker at the house. So we've got a, quite a few more episodes left of that, I think. Couple he's got, of, couple he's got a World War II bunker. Anybody wants to watch across Mike's in his house. Yeah, um, we do. Well, it's actually not in his house, it's just outside. <laughs> Obviously, if it's in the house, it's not much good because the house gets bombed and collapses on top of the bunker. <laughs> no, that's been uh, that's yeah. been good, actually. And then we've been doing the roundhouse. We'll be doing the Celtic roundhouse. I saw that one, yeah. So that's yeah. still got another quite a few more episodes left of that. Yeah. And yeah, really, it's it's been a bit of a, I said, a, a lull period, really, for me, because obviously I've just had the yeah. birth of Eve, yeah. my daughter, and that the last two months have been adjusting life to that. So the films have not been put on the back burner as such, but I've not been throwing everything into the films. And it's been, as we do this, it's like winter, so it's not great. You wouldn't yeah. know that, there's a massive storm coming. I know, it's like <laughs> summer out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely yeah. out there. I mean, it's like summer in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Bombay in here. Oh no, it's now Mumbai. You can't, it's not Bombay, it shows you how old I am. I think it's Mumbai, isn't it? I think so, yeah, you've got to change Mumbai, Bombay, there. whatever. Yeah. Anyhow, Mike's going to just run through a quick one about, we use like fishermen's knives, don't we? I've got some knives here, Paul. Mike's going to give you a rough, quick guide on, you know, one of the best ways to sharpen them, because everybody out there, if I'm filleting a fish, they crease me, don't they? <laughs> Your they... knives are so blunt, Dad. They are so... They're not that blunt. You know it's bad when you're sawing with a, with a fillet yeah, knife. Yeah. <laughs> Some people say, you might as well turn up the other side using blunt side grab. It's just as, just as effective in your hands. <laughs> anyway, I've got here three knives, just as general ones. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on those. I already know which knife I know the most about, which has been yeah. the most popular on, on my channel, well, that's for sure. This is just your standard filleting knife. Nothing special, just I don't know what make it is. This one, everybody loves. Yeah, they do, don't they? They, they, they say it's a German Hitler Hit youth knife, knife or yeah. something like that. I love it, I absolutely love it because I love the finger guard. But this one here, wait for this, this is probably older. This, believe it or not people, is my scout knife at the age of, no police around her is it? Nine. <laughs> now I know you older Imagine guys. Imagine nowadays. A nine year you older guys, we used to play with these things all the time. They were standard issue, came with, well, they've all got sheaths, the fishing knife. Obviously, that one has one, and it's got a nice little leather stitch one. These were standard guys in the Scouts. You well, I don't know how to put this. You were a school teacher. I don't know how to. I can, how can I tell them? See this one here, guys. How long is that blade? Like five, six inches? No, 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 no. That's only that's three. That that's three. Is it legal? That would actually non-locking three-inch knife. You might get away with that, yeah, but it's, it needs to be folding with it, you know, concealed a bit more. So it wouldn't be wise it's to take this one to school, would it? No, you'd probably yeah. You'd, we all took our knives to school a lot of time. Well, you'd need yeah. to be eighteen probably nowadays. No, ten. Back ten years old, we were doing those, <laughs> and we take. Oh, we all should go in, and uh, obviously the teachers didn't know we got them, and uh, <laughs> we used to play what they call splits. Does anybody know what splits is? Banana? Do you know? Do you know what splits is? Splits. You is that where you have go through the no, that, fingers? No, no, no. no. That would mean my eyes. That'd be no fingers doing <laughs> that one. Uh, no, splits is outside. I get a two minutes. We'll show you what it was. Some old guys out there are going to know what playing splits is with a scout knife. Anyway, right. You run through how you would sharpen these because I know the angle is important. All I've got here is a couple of stones. You just do a rough guide on it. And I've got, I don't know whether you use oil or not, so you so, tell the guys. Go on, instantly drawn to the middle one because of the grind. Yeah. So it's actually got, it's got a, a, a micro bevel as well, what we would call a micro bevel. So that 
knife has almost like a Scandinavian style grind there. That's where they call it Scandi That's grind. That's a Scandi grind, yeah. But it's not because actually when you look and you reflect it in the light, it's got a secondary bevel down here. Yeah. That might have been either from the way you've sharpened it or it's actually Probably. or it's actually put on there purposely because it's then making the knife a lot stronger. I you know, see, yeah. it is that double bevel is actually making it it's going to take a beating rather than having to sharpen it all the time. So you so you're normally a bushcraft, you're yeah, you're a bushcraft that's the filleting, isn't it? But yeah, a bushcraft style knife like this, Scandinavian grind. Normally, I just find the bevel. Let me let me bring the camera around here, guys, because it's no problem. I'll pick it up. We do this because it might be interesting for guys that just want to actually have a go at sharpening their knife. So I would because of that bevel, lovely. You can see a real big bevel there. So I rest the knife like that. At, the choil here, you don't want to put on the stone because otherwise that's a little flat piece. Yeah, the choil. You don't want that on there. You want that off the edge of the stone. But I would just find flatten the knife ninety degrees and then tilt it yeah. till it can't tilt anymore. Yeah. And that would then mean I'm flush with the bevel onto the stone. Oh, I see. Yes. So then I would now normally I wouldn't do it away from me. I'd like to do it towards me. So I'd start like that to begin with. Yeah. So I can see. And I would just put, I use water stones, Japanese water stones, but you've used this. If you put oil on the stone or water, stick with it. Don't change. Don't okay. put oil on a water. If you've got a water stone and you've put oil on it, just stick with it from there on. Don't go and wash it off and then put water on it again. Because Whatever saw, you've done, just stick with it. Because I saw a stone that the guy submerged in water and let it fill with bubbles. That's, that's, what, that's, that's, what, I use. that's what I use, a Japanese water stone. This is, this is, an, this is just a carbon oil. Stone. Yeah, it's just an oil. You put oil on it, I can see it from yeah. the film. But don't go and put water on this. Oh, it's going to repel yeah. it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But don't, leave it as oil now. So I just tilt it towards me like that and then just literally just slide it towards me. So nothing, aggr now, nothing aggressive then? No, 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 just slowly like that. It's, it's not about speed. You see in the movies them sharpening swords with a pebble, with a stone, a whetstone, and they yes. just go... Yes. They're not going... Yes, yes, going yes, yes. It's not about the speed, really, and you get more control doing this. But I'd like to have it cutting towards me. Just watch the microphone there. But because there's a secondary bevel on this, you can't really do that, so you have to tilt it even more. That's the bevel, let me just point from there down. Yeah, that the, the, the secondary edge, bevel. Yeah. There's the main bevel, then there's a, a secondary, you might see it reflecting in the light. Yeah, just a little bit glisten. And I would just want to tilt that even more, so almost like a 45 degree angle there, and do it that way. And you'd have to try and keep that same angle. And what you can do is make a wooden wedge Oh yeah. at the right 45 degree angle there, and each time you sharpen it, put that wedge tucked up against the back of the blade. That's a good idea. And then idea. it won't rock and you won't change the angle. You'll stay fixed at that angle. And that's a good way for beginners yeah, yeah, to keep, yeah. well, even advanced. You can just then always know that you've got that exact angle on that knife. Then when you've done that and you work along the blade, when you get towards the tip here, you have to sort of roll it and lift your wrist. Yes. Just to get that. That's the hardest bit, the tip. And then you'll flip it and you'll do the same again. And obviously if you've got that wedge, put the wedge in at the back and do the same. Probably about, I do it about 10 times each way. Yes. And then I would strop it on some leather. Yeah, and you, yeah, when you're yeah. stropping, you don't cut towards you, you pull it away from you like that. Oh, I see. And that just puts what, it just refines any of that? That just takes all the metal burr that you get. When you, as you do this, you're gonna build up, the stone's gonna take tiny fragments of metal off, and it's gonna leave what we would call a burr on there, and I've not done it enough to see that. Yeah. But you could, you could just rub your finger like that and you'd see the metal on your hand. So you wanna take that off. Some people leave it on, it's still sharp, it's still gonna cut. But to get that real precision edge, yes. then you would strop it with leather. So on, on the on the knife thing, what you're talking about, this is for hard work. I know it's for hard work. This is you know? look at the steel. It's thick. So, it's thick. It's heavy. This is not for fine carving. No, like, this or is a, this is an all round a tough wood knife. splitting. Yeah, anything. anything you could do anything. Chamfering, with this. tapering, cutting yeah. up wood. Yeah, I mean it's almost like a weapon, really. This one, when looking at it, you know, it's just yeah. it's a bit more. It, it, it's a it's a multi tool, really. It's made in England. You can see actually Whitby, yeah. made in Collingham. Bowie knife. It is a Bowie shaped it's knife. A Bowie, isn't it? Yeah, with a tip. Super so. hollow ground. That's what it's got. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's grind all different types of grinds, but I I know what you mean. I like it because of that finger guard. I do. Yeah. I feel safe with that. Yeah. So, it so now, which is why I think it's more of a weapon. <laughs> Probably is, yeah. But now, yeah. looking at the scout knife here, yeah. that when you can sharpen away, look, I've got my finger on that. I know, I can feel, and I'm no expert. Well, I do I need to tell you people that? That's real basic. 
that's not been refined at all. Has no, it? there's there's it's almost ground more one side more one side than the no, other. No, that doesn't have. That's been used. For, have you filed that with a proper file? No, I haven't tried filing it. No, it <coughs> almost might need a proper file just to get that. I get it a rubber with a bit of wire wool. Yeah, you know, just to clean it for this. The but tips, that, that's sixty years old. Yeah, that's look at that's that. sixty years old. And it's Sheffield. Sheffield is where the main steel, steel in England. Yeah, yeah tradition. Yeah. So that's. But now it doesn't have a bevel. It has a sort of bowie type. So this no, it does. Traditionally, this would have had what's called a convex bevel. So convex is just like think of your church roof yeah. type bevel. That's what a that, this would have definitely been a convex bevel, which means it would just be one bevel, not a double bevel, not a secondary. So you only sharpen one side of it. So no, it just means you wouldn't have t your secondary bevel on this. There's two two angles of the blade. There's that yeah. one, then there's that one. Yes. Whereas this one just has that bottom, the bottom one. one. Yeah. yeah. And you would keep it like that. But the same principle applies for sharpening with yeah. with this. I'll just put that on there. But you would just do the same. But I can see from <laughs> from holding the blade oh, on yeah, that flat, look, at, look at the daylight. So you would need to get a file, oh, you'd first. put this in a vise, yep. and you'd need to just file everything flat like that, up to that secondary turn. So like that would be me messing that up as a kid, filing it probably, and taking the middle. And you've completely taken away middle, this bit there. Rather than doing it straight. I can yeah, see, you guys yeah. can probably see the daylight through that. If you had to bring the camera around there, you can see the light. If I block it there, then lift it up, there's some light coming under there. You can see the gap, so that's where it's... So I need to start with a straight edge then? Yeah, it's kind of coming cutting back in. Yeah, so you need yeah. to draw, almost draw a line with a pen and then start again, take okay. some material off. But it's an, again, that's got a nice little finger guard there. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's lovely and light. Yeah, well, as I say, that was a standard scout knife. Absolutely a standard one. I really like the handle on that, you know. Yeah, it wants cleaning up and varnishing. It's, yeah. got, it's got different brass inlays there as well on the... It's a full tang that. knife, which means the tang goes all the way through to the the, 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 whole, the, hand, the whole handle. Yeah, so that means it's, it's sturdy. Some knives, the metal sort of tapers off here, you get tapered tang. Yeah. Whereas that tang is going all the way through, so you'd like to think that that's going to last your lifetime. That is definitely full tang, that's solid metal. Oh, we say one piece. Yeah, it's all one piece metal. So yeah. that's another thing to think about. And oh, then the filleting knife, now that's a different. Filleting knives, and if you look, filleting knives are designed to bend, look. Yeah. They're designed to be bendy because they go over and around fish bones, which are very delicate. So you, you know it's a filleting knife, you can just put it the tip down like that and you can yeah. bend it and flex it. And that's just so you can go in and around those rib cage bones. These are pretty simple again, it's just a, a, a convex grind, which is the same as that, which te technically the same grind as that knife there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously they're a lot longer. Yes. So you can either, there's two ways you could do this. You can either do it like this on the side. Yeah. A lot of knife sharpeners don't do don't like this. They, oh, they say that's completely wrong. But I've done it and I personally quite like doing it. Yeah. Because you look how much of the bevel I'm getting on that there. Yes. And, and you just get the right angle and you just go up and down like a soaring motion. And if you think about it, that's how you're cutting into the fish. You're slicing. Yeah, same so it's, angle. it's kind of a slice. And I would just, I do that one side, and then obviously when you're getting to the tip, you start to curve round. Yeah. And then you're going round and round, and you just got to always watch the tip. And once that's wet with oil, you can actually see it push the oil and move the oil or the water. You see the so oil. So you know when the bevel's touching the stone. And then I, you do the same again on the other side. You can either hold it down here yeah. and do that. But most of the time, you'd, you'd be better just cutting towards you and doing a slice. Right, now what I've, I've heard about this before, why cut towards you? What, what is there about that? Uh, going I do right? it, I don't know the science behind it, but my personal reason is because I can see the bevel. Yes. I can see what's touching the stone yeah. all the way through that stroke. As soon as I do that, I can, I can kind of feel it, but I can't really see it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'd much rather see it. So you, and you get, you get a bit ambidextrous then, because you start using your left hand as well, which yeah. feels strange sharpening. But you don't put much pressure on it, I can see you. No, not really. No, 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 no. Do, do four or five strokes as the if you're stone's, actually sharpening it. The stone's doing the work. And so you, you hear the noise, yeah, the listen, cutting. Listen to the noise, yeah. And it's almost like you can hear the metal coming off you it. Can, yeah, and you just, I mean, it's a dry stone really, so it should be. Find the bevel first and take your time to find the bevel, because otherwise you're just undoing all the work that you've just done. So if you, if you rush it and then you start blunting that bevel again, you just wasted all that sharpening time. Obviously, if you look, all my hands and my knuckles and my fingers, they're not up here, they're all tucked underneath. So, so nothing, if I come forward here, look, I'm not gonna cut anything. It's just yeah, there, yeah, and that's yeah. why I don't put pressure. Yes, yeah. A very small amount of pressure. You need some pressure, but just a small amount. 
Okay. Alternatively, I guess with these, you could use your kitchen ones. You know those kitchen style stones. St- yeah, steels. Yeah, but that's put a bit of an edge on it. Yeah. Not loads, just but touch you can... it. Oh yeah, yeah. Just show them with a bit of oil on it that you can actually see the oil being cut. So normally I would probably just run my fingers like that because you want the oil spread evenly. You want it level, yeah. Yeah, you want it covering the stone. So now, if you if I can hold it in the light, you might be able to just see the oil move. So I hold it at forty-five. See the oil on the blade? Yeah, building up on the blade, yeah. Yeah, so I know my bevel's right. See that all building up on the blade? Yeah. And then that's what's going to be the burr as well. You can see bits in it. Bits of metal on there, and that's when you want to strop it on a piece of leather. But the reverse, just the reverse of what you're doing here, imagine that's my leather belt, just push it away from you. And that's, look, everyone's got their own techniques for sharpening knives. There are good ways of doing it, there are bad ways of doing it, but at the end of the day, there's just your preference of okay. doing it. If it okay. does the job and you cut a fillet off a fish and you eat it, okay, it's, it done might, the job. it's going to taste exactly the same. It's just you might be pulling out a few more bones than normal. But and the fish itself and my, is going to taste. With my sharp, near a few metal filings. <laughs> yeah. Now, so we, we've, we've given them a bit of a tip on that. Yeah. So uh, just to close out, guys, I think there's only one thing to do. My son doesn't know what it is. I think we just have a quick 30 second go and see if I can beat him at eight year olds playing this game, yeah. splits. So right guys, playing splits when you're eight years old, and remember we used to do this at school, taking these to school. Do not take them to school, kids. We're not promoting that. I'm just telling you what it was like 55, 60 years ago. You stand opposite each other, and you throw this, and you must spin it in blade so it lands, okay? You stand that's why your blade's you so st- blunt. <laughs> that's why it's so blunt. It's gone through so many other school children's feet. <laughs> and then it's whoever can stretch their legs apart, the farthest, and reach that where you've thrown it. Right, now I've got a step, guys. To there. Oh, I see. Okay. Now you can take a gamble and, and take go a long really throw. Wide. If, he, if it's it, too wide, what happens? If, I if you miss step, it, it's too wide. Lost. The other guy gets two goes. So it might. You just want to get. Right, so I got to there. there. Yeah, Outside of it. it or inside? Well, it doesn't matter. You can go level with it. That's what we used yeah. to do. Now, do you, I actually you, use both you, feet? You can decide where you want me to stretch me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. stretching me. Well, uh, it doesn't really count. You no? can do two. Two goes. If you really fancy, you could do double spin so it involves me. It's your gamble because I get two goes if you miss. Oh, oh missed, no. so you get two. It's two goes, I've got two goes. I missed, he gets two goes. <laughs> oh, oh, like a dart. Hey, listen, I'm 69, I'm not sure what's going to fall off, you know. This is how to absolutely ruin your knife blade, by the way. Oh, I got one. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're going that side. That's oh, a count, yeah, yeah that's a count. Sort of going. <laughs> this is, who needs yoga? What? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toast him now. Oh, oh no! no! He's got two This goes. is it. This is game over. No. Oh! <laughs> Can't reach it. I'll mark it with a stick. Yeah, I can How many see sticks are there? <laughs> I'm looking to see which leg's further. I reckon if I go the yeah, other way. Yeah, but I could dummy you. Yeah, pretend. that's true. I could be pretending. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. No. no, it's harder. The further you go away, the harder it gets, guys. Oh, oh that's it. Get in. Ah. Oh, he's got it. I'll let him have that. There's a little bit of shuffling going on there. Oh, good. <laughs> and you can't kneel, you've got to be split. No, this he's, is game he, over. If you done. get this in. Oh, I can't. <laughs> that. That's a great game. Splits. I see what you mean now. So anyway, Splits been, and broken hips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that nylon in the hips yeah. has stretched a bit. You know, maybe I've got nylon in the hips and it's banned. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Don't forget to uh, look out. We'll be back in the tackle shack. You'll be up again sometime. I'll won't be you? up. Yeah, yeah, we'll be up definitely. Yeah, maybe we'll. Well, well, well I've got to come up to the Viking Turf House in a minute. Oh so yeah, yeah, we'll and we'll uh, maybe have a look through some pike lures or something like that. Or I'll find another dangerous childish game like splits. Anyway, is anybody out there to remember this? Has anybody else of senior years ever played this? Please, somebody back me up because I'll get arrested by telling people to throw <laughs> knives and stretch them apart and there'll be <laughs> hip disjointments and everything. We played it as kids. I'm just telling you, this is what it was like years ago at my school. We'll see you again. Cheers, guys. Mm-hmm.